What is up guys, Karma Medic here and I am done exams, I'm done with second year of King's College London Medicine. Hi, you got me a little bit out of breath. I had a really sick night out yesterday at Guy's Bar. I ended up meeting quite a few of you guys. I think I met like 10, 11 or 12 of you who watch my videos. So shout out to all of you and thanks for coming up to me and saying hi. And yeah, it's just the best feeling in the world. I'm done with exams and I have summer ahead of me. So it's currently the day after the exam and what I wanted to do before I head off to Canada and just have a bunch of other things in my schedule is I wanted to sort of sit down and reflect a little bit about my time at King's College London during my second year of medical school. Sort of reflect on the year, talk about what it was like, all the different things that I did and maybe that can give you guys some insight into what it's like to be at medical school and maybe you're interested and you'll apply to medicine if you want to check out my videos you can etc etc so second year at King's College London is when you have the transition from lecture based learning to clinical learning so you're in hospital placement and at the GP talking to real actual patients and of course that's something that we didn't do in first year first year was very lecture heavy it was very theory focused and now we were actually gonna go out there and talk to patients and stuff like that now although I knew I was gonna be speaking to patients a lot throughout this year at the very very beginning I was so so nervous and the reason for that is because you kind of just get thrown into the hospital and people expect expect you to show up and do things and know things and it's kind of scary when you're doing it for the first time. On top of that, you're going to be speaking to real humans and you can't just sort of slip up and say something really stupid and then be like, oh sorry, I take it back. You know, this isn't like a written exam or a mistake on a multiple choice test. You know, once you've said the words, they're out there and there's a real human sitting in front of you. So a lot of this year was trying to figure out sort of how to talk to patients and maintain that good level of interpersonality and social skill while also taking all of the information that you need from the patient in order to try and help come up with clinical diagnoses and management plans appropriately. So yeah, think about it. You've basically been sitting in a lecture hall for a whole year, just sitting down, listening to professors talk, taking notes on your laptop or your iPad or whatever. And now you're gonna be thrown into the hospital with other doctors, surgeons, nurses, physiotherapists, everything everybody is there and you know they don't expect that much from you but you need to be there you need to show up another big change for the second year is that a lot of the learning becomes driven by you you have to show up at hospital but nobody really checks that you're there nobody checks what you're doing throughout your day so a lot of the learning comes down to you you have to say I want to go see this I want to follow X person around and I want to cover a B and C skills nobody's gonna tell you that you have to learn how to insert a catheter on this day or you need to learn how to recognize the sounds of different heart murmurs on that day you have to go and you have to see what patients are available and tailor your learning to what is around you and that is kind of a difficult skill to get used to you know it takes a lot of internal motivation a lot of self-drive to say I'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m. I'm gonna make a one and a half hour trek to the hospital and then once I'm there I'm gonna make sure I take every single opportunity I can to learn so hospital placement and GP has been absolutely some of the best times I've ever had at university in the hospital I think now I've been to something like 4, 8, 12, 16 different wards. So I've seen a whole range of different specialties of medicine. I've gotten to talk to patients that are really young, that are middle-aged, that are very old, patients who are healthy and just have a little bit of a problem, and other patients that are in the intensive care unit or high dependency unit and you know are sort of at the end of their lives. I feel like I've learned so much medicine in this one year. Of course, there's still three more years to go and I have a lot, a lot to learn, but I feel like I'm well on my way and it's just, it's just great. Okay, so GP was actually really, really cool. You get assigned to a general practice with a couple of other students and depending on who your GP is and how they want to teach you, you do different things. So I got quite lucky and my GP was fantastic. She actually let us sit in the chair of the doctor and take the history fully from the patients that came in. She was sitting behind us and to the side so she could step in if of course we said anything that was incorrect or when it came to the point where we needed to do like prescription and treatment, obviously we can do that as medical students. So my GP honestly was so great. She let us take on the leading role and she really threw us in the deep end so to speak. Uh, we really were forced to just sort of take the history, extract as much information as we could and try and come up with a clinical diagnosis and maybe a management plan as well. So the GP was definitely some of my best experience. You know, I would sit in the doctor's chair, I would call in a patient that I knew pretty much nothing about except for having a small read through their notes before they came in. And then, you know, they would sit there, tell me their problem and that would be it. You'd have to start from there, ask 
so many different questions to try and piece together the story to try and understand what's going on. So that's honestly the biggest thing that I learned this year is how to take a history from a patient, how to ask them questions in an open ended manner that allow them to open up to you and tell you things in their own words so that you're not leading them down a closed path. You know what, let me take you guys to the couch. What do we think of that? Is that a cool view? Mm. What was I talking about? We've already gotten our placements for next year for our student selected component. So you know how this year I was doing a project on HIV vaccine development and we basically had to do like a bunch of lectures on that and then write an essay and make a presentation. I actually have this included in one of my vlogs. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Next year, I now know that I'm gonna be doing a project on nasogastric tubes in children. Oh my God, how, how could I forget? We had our first set of OSCEs this year as well. OSCEs are objective structured clinical exams. They are basically clinical scenarios or clinical skills that you have to do to prove that you have certain competencies as a student doctor. But what this will involve is like a respiratory exam or an abdominal exam, a cardiac exam, you know, where you have to observe a patient, you have to feel them in their peripheries, you have to take your stethoscope, listen to their chest or their abdomen, percuss. Let's see if I can get a good one for you guys. Can you guys hear that? So you need to percuss on the person's chest or abdomen to look for different signs, look for different abnormalities, and just ask the right questions and you know try and figure out what is going on with the patient in front of you. We also have things like um, how to take certain histories. So for example, a gynecological history or a conversation about you know how to stop smoking or how to lose weight, things like that. These are all types of things that come up in our OSCEs. <laughs> about to plug another video guys if you guys want to learn a little bit more about the oskies i talk about it in one of my vlogs links in the description or on screen or whatever anyway so my first ever oskies this year you know it was kind of um it was kind of scary i'm not gonna lie like it's kind of like an mmi interview except you have to do a lot of physical practical activities as well you know you have to talk to real patients and there's an examiner in the room and they're sort of looking at everything that you do marking things down so it's quite a like high intensity high stress situation but it's something that we're gonna have to do every single year and so it's something that I just need to get used to and get better at as time goes on thankfully I actually did really really well in my OSCEs I'm really really happy I did a lot of practice with Kenji and Georgina you know practical practice actually talking out loud actually doing the exams and going through the motions going through the physical steps that you need to do to do well on these stations um, and yeah, it, it was a really good experience and I hope to keep it up for next year as well. So besides the clinical aspects of second year at King's, we did continue to have lectures throughout the year and those were always on a Monday. And usually I'd say we had lectures from something like nine till 12, 10 till one, 10 till two, something like that. The lectures were significantly less this year than they were in first year. A lot of the lectures were focused on clinical diseases, clinical presentations, treatments, management plans, etc. So it kind of all really felt like this information was going to be directly relevant to me on the wards, to me in the hospital. And that's something that I was really happy about. In first year, there was still a lot of like biochemistry, metabolism, pathways, um, you know, just things to memorize that you don't really need to know as a doctor. These are all the like very specific, they're not exactly perfectly re relevant to clinical medicine. So it was great to see that the lectures this year focused a lot more on the clinical aspect. We had lectures on a Monday, hospital on Tuesday. Wednesday was supposed to be reserved for anatomy. And I was really excited about this because I wanted to continue cadaveric dissection. It's one of the things that I enjoyed most last year. And I talked about that in my review of first year of medical school at King's. I'll leave a link to it somewhere up there. And yeah, so I was really looking forward to continuing dissection this year. And we actually didn't really get started on dissection until the second semester, so after December. And it was really sparse. We did dissections, I think, once every two or three weeks. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it was significantly more sparse than last week than last year. Last year we had dissection, I think, almost once a week, which is kind of a bummer. I really wanted to continue the learning of anatomy through cadaveric dissection, but instead I had to resort to using my computer, a bunch of 3D models and stuff, and I also got flashcards, uh, Netter's anatomy flashcards that I've shown in another vlog. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop linking videos now. You can find anything you want in the description down below. 
below. Stats lectures, that's nice sections. We still had tutorials and workshops and things like that, but again, significantly less than last year. Now, all of this free time that we've had during second year, I've used very, very productively. And that's one of the reasons that I was able to produce so many YouTube videos this year and something that I'm very grateful for so I could spend some time on passion projects that I have outside of medical school. That free time also allowed me to play basketball every single week. It allowed me to go on runs, go to the gym, hang out with friends, you know, do all of my social activities and everything that I need to do outside of medical school to make sure that I'm still motivated, I'm not burnt out uh, by medical school. And I still have the energy to work and strive for good grades and learning in medical school. There was enough time in my life in second year at medical school for me to do everything that I wanted. And that includes academics as well. I was still studying every single day doing lectures, doing tutorials, doing workshops, you know, that work still needs to be done. So for me, how I work throughout the year is that I do a little bit of work every single day so that when it comes to exam time, I don't have everything piling up on me and I have the whole world crashing down where I have something like 100 lectures to learn in a month or whatever. And usually what that turned out to be was something like two to three hours of work a day to catch up on lectures, tutorials, workshops, anatomy, uh, student selective component projects, whatever it was. Another big change with second year was that we started doing progress tests. So progress tests are single best answer, multiple choice tests that have a lot of material that you've never seen before. So for example, when we did our first progress test, we had studied 12.5% of the material on that test. When we did the second progress test, we had studied 25%. And then by the time we wrote progress test three, we had covered 50% of the examinable material. So next year, when we learn the next 12.5, the next 12.5, the next 12.5, we're gonna eventually know more and more knowledge to be able to answer questions on these tests. And this is supposed to be a good method of learning to sort of get students to think outside the box, think ahead, do a little bit of future studying, looking ahead into some topics that you're gonna learn next year. So the progress tests in themselves were quite an interesting experience. You know, it's it's really weird when you write a test and you've only studied 10 or 12.5% of the material that's on it. There is so much guessing, so much trying to figure out what's going on even though you don't know. And some of the questions, you know, they just have a bunch of words that I've never heard before, I've never seen before. And so I just have to guess those entirely. And then there's other questions where you kind of know some of the things, you don't know other things, and you can try and figure out and reason your way into coming to a good answer. Answer. So I guess that's all part of the learning process, but it's definitely a weird feeling. So that took a little bit of getting used to. I think our pass marks for the first two progress tests were 43 marks out of 100 and then 47 or something like that. Again, don't quote me on that. And then of course those get scaled up. So yeah, it's a little bit weird to get used to the fact that you're scoring like 50, 55, 60, 65% on these tests. It's a little bit different than high school where you are able to score 100%, 95%, 98%, whatever. Thankfully throughout this year, I've still been able to maintain a great social life while at medical school. You know, I've gone out with my friends every single week for dinners, for uh, board game nights, for going out on the weekends. I've played sports every week, gone to the gym, run, seen friends at uni. You know, there's still plenty of time to do social activities and extracurriculars. I've been making YouTube videos for this whole year, almost every single week. I think every single week, actually. I might have missed one week, maybe two, throughout the year for exams and stuff. All right, so I think I've been rambling on for a really, really long time now. So in conclusion, the biggest things that I learned during my second year of medical school at King's College London. So first and foremost, I think I've learned how to take a good history. The second big thing that I think I learned to do is just how to deal through or be exposed to really difficult conversations and difficult situations with patients. You know, when I first started uh, the clinics, I just, for some reason thought, you know, every patient was gonna be middle-aged, healthy, happy to talk to me, really just like fun and chill. And of course that's not the case. You know, you get patients of all different age ranges, all different levels of niceness and social interactability. And of course, all different severities of things that's going on with their own health and in their lives. So it was a big adjustment to sort of realize what is going on with others and how I need to listen to what they're saying, understand their situation and what they're saying, and then use my medical knowledge to try and figure out what might be best for them. Both really, really great things. Um, I'm very thankful for the experiences that I've had, and I hope to continue to learn with similar experiences in the future. So yeah, guys, second year has been quite a ride, honestly. So much clinical focus, so much clinical exposure in the hospitals and the GPs and OSCE exams, progress tests. 
there has really been a lot of changes since first year. You know, first year is like somewhere over here and then second year you just take a big, big, big jump, honestly. It's really cool, I think, I think it's awesome. And I'm just really excited to start third year of medical school. You know, it's basically around the corner. I'm basically a third year medical student. Knock on wood, not gonna fail. And I just cannot wait to see what it brings. I cannot wait to start. And yeah, I'm just really excited. Anyways, I have rambled on for way too long. If you are still watching the video at this point, you are a legend. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content from me. And yeah, I will see you guys in Toronto. I will see you in the next video. Peace.